Okay, um, can everybody hear me? Everybody hear me? Yes, okay. Good afternoon. Um, I'm here to talk about uh, building engaging communities with gamification, commerce, and integrations. It's a long title, it's a, it's a short talk, so um, I'm going to get on with it. Okay, my name is Van van Uitvanger. Um, I was a Drupal developer and I turned functional analyst. And I'm here to talk about gamification. Um, as like I said before, there is only 20 minutes, uh, including the questions. So I'm going to go pretty fast. And if there are questions afterwards, feel free to contact me or the people at our booth uh, downstairs. So um, first and foremost, this is going to be an inspirational session about an actual uh, project we are doing. So it's still under development. I translated it into a very short talk about Drupal and how we, com uh, we applied um, commerce, uh, the community and gamification. Like I said, work in, products, pro uh, work in progress about the company in the medical sector. So again, for more information, feel free to drop by and talk to me or talk to us for everybody at DropSolid. So how did the project start? We have this client and we came to the client and he said, we want a new but extended website. We already knew that the client invested heavily in their social or social media um, presence. So we asked in different workshops. So the workshops were divided into strategic workshops, like understanding the business logic, where, are they, where are they going to, how we're going to implement gamification, if, it, if that is what they want, but also a lot of um, functional detail. How are the things going to work? How is everything connected? How are APIs implemented? And then we had technical workshops. So first of all, their request was like, okay, next to our public website, we want to add a space where our partners, our affiliates can manage their businesses. On top of that, we want to create a community of users and a community that feeds itself. And thirdly, and not unimportant is we want to add a shop. So that was the initial brief and we were like, okay, let's refine this. Let's try to understand what those people want and how we can optimize everything. First of all, the partner portal. So it's a login for their prof professional partners. Professional partners can be um, therapists, physicists who work for this company, but they have also their own company. So they can manage um, their commissions, their company, their employees, all inside that partner portal. Important side note, the partner portal, in order to create that, had a very large API de dependency. And in this case, it's um, focused on um, Microsoft Dynamics. Secondly, what they wanted is a large community. And for us, that was the first thing we needed to tackle because communities are language based. For example, you can have a Dutch community that contains uh, countries like Belgium and the Netherlands, but you could also have English communities which contains a lot more um, countries. For us, this, for us, this was a, um, a, complex, oh, a complex issue because um, Shops work um, based on uh, language and location. So we need to ha find a way to intertwine those two. Secondly, the community also needed a Facebook-like clone. So users have a wall where they can post, react, share, add followers, follow people, etc. And that's also a place to fa facilitate content creation. Like I said before, the goal of the community is to feed the community. So there were multiple roles and permissions and a whole workflow system and a wizard for basic users on how to create content for the community. And thirdly and lastly, they needed the online shop. So we used a Drupal commerce using the products API and here also a very large API dependency on Business Central. So the additional complexities in this very high level setup is the multilingual setup versus the multi-market setup. So we have a certain amount of content restrictions. So the community is based on language, commerce, the commerce is based on markets. There's a lot of user hierarchy, like the roles and permissions, complex editorial workflows, and so on. And also here, the many, many API dependencies. So that was the functional part. We were like, okay, we need to understand what are we going to build? How are we going to build it? 
But in order to align business logic and expectations, we need to add another layer to seamlessly melt all elements together into one cohesive project. So we restarted thinking, playing a game of ping pong with the client, and we said, okay, let's add a layer of gamification. And for the client also was like, what is gamification? So we, again, we did a lot of workshops and we came with a, some sort of reward system where the users and the members are able to collect community coins, which the web administrators can configure through uh, a conditional logic. I'll go into that in into detail in a moment. And the whole model was like earn and spend. First of all, they can earn. We have to create a loyalty. They have to earn um, stuff by supporting the community. For example, they can write a blog post. The, the community will love like, okay, somebody wrote a blog post about a certain product. They get some loyalty for it and then they can spend the, sh the, the, the coins they earn in the shop and they get rewarded. So by adding gamification, we were, we were able to stitch all those um, individual islands together into one, into one part. But how and where did we implement, implement all of this? So community members, and I'm going to quickly go over this one, community uh, members have a personal dashboard. So when people create an account, they have a personal dashboard, they can see an overview of what's happening in the community. First of all, like I said before, you have the timeline which displays content. It's a Facebook-like timeline with posting, commenting, and, and other uh, stuff like that. They have my health, so, and also my partners, so users can connect through a certain partner. The results from the exercises they do with those partners are also added to their personal dashboard. They have their own network. They can say, oh, that's an interesting guy. I want to follow that partner or that user and then follow him and then see their content appear on their timeline. They can create content and they do uh, moderation based on three profiles and a workflow. They can participate in discussions, but again, these are language based in order, in order to filter out uh, clutter. They can share data with a professional partner and they can collect and spend community community coins. For example, they write a blog post, they uh, add a comment in a thread, they rate a product, they share a page, they complete their profile. There are a lot of ways to earn content. Um, also, a we made a custom wizard for content input for basic members. You have to know in the community there were three levels of members. First of all, is the first stream of members who don't know what, what's it about. So we, we created a custom wizard that explains everything and they can create custom content for the community. All this and more is reflected in the timeline and also the extended notification center. So this is a, a sneak preview of work in progress. This is what a community member gets to see. Uh, what can he do? What sim simply stated, they can add content and they create content based on their current language. They can write a story, a blog post, tips and tricks, training, whatever, and they can also um, do it through an editorial level. By that I mean, for example, I am a basic user, I create content, but my content is not yet published. There is another user who needs to revise it in the workflow and publish it. When that is done, the original uh, content creator gets, for example, a certain amount of, amount of coins. Next to that, they can connect to the partners, also uh, added to the gamification, they can attach and detach uh, themselves to one or more partners, they can do follow-up on their health, they can share information with the partner and find uh, another partner. The most important thing is you have to also know that the client has a very large amount, they invest on monthly basis on social media. So they really are trend checking what's happening and we need to always uh, implement that. But for, for them, the most important thing is like, they want to post items on the time, timeline, they want to follow and unfollow people so they are informed about new trends, new stuff that is coming. Again, like I said before, comment, rate, share on posts and products. And they stay informed through notifications. So there is a notification center that on one hand sends push notifications the moment you earn something, but also as a dedicated page, some sort of uh, overview page where all your um, gamification items are listed. Also, um, very important is the setup of their profile. Not all fields are mandatory. So 
they can set personal preferences. When they do so, they earn coins. Um, they will be used for a certain amount of personalization on the timeline. For example, when you write a blog post, you can add certain topics. If you're interested in those topics, those uh, blog posts will be pushed to the top of your feed. So the web admin, and this is what I want to talk about, um, is it can moderate the community, they can moderate all content, including the workflows. They can configure additional shops. They can do anything. It is built in Drupal. They can do lots of things. But they also can configure the community based on internal and external events. So they can add an action like share, create. They can apply it to a certain content type and then assign the community coins that can be earned to that action. So I made some um, examples just to make it clear. Example one is configure that the user earns 20 coins when creating a blog post. So when we translate that to gamification, users are incentivized to create a blog post. And when the post is approved, so at the end of the workflow, so if you can say when it's published, it appears in the community and the creator gets rewarded. So we have a community, you create content, you get your reward uh, and you can spend it in the shop. So we make kind of a circle movement. So how are we how did we build this? How can a, um, a web administrator configure that? So let's take the same case, configure that the user earns 20 coins when creating a blog post. So you can give your event a name, you can give it a description, and then you have to uh, assign a certain type. Either you have a Drupal internal event, and those are like a create um, comment and stuff like that, or you can trigger an external event um, by an API. And I'll come back to that later. So when you do that, you can add the event of the action. You can say, well, something is created. When there is a moderation, when there is something shared, when there is something rated, when you have profile completion under certain conditions, when you comment on something, when an order is completed, you can earn something. So what we do that, when, you, when we know what needs to be done, we set the target entity type. So in this case, yeah, well, it's content that needs to create it. The target entity bundle in this case is which content type is this applied to? So content from a block item, well, you can earn the amount of 20 credits. Other than that, I told that they have a um, extended um, notification system. By default, when you create an, an event, the notification is created using tokens. So we can see it in the example, we can use tokens. So we created a lot of custom tokens that web administrators can use in order to give them a lot of um, flexibility to create custom alerts for people. For example, if they want to create an event that's temporary, we can put it in, we can use it, make it together using tokens and change the text. So we want to give them as much flexibility as possible. Of course, um, when we tested this, there are many, many, many edge cases. So as a side note, this has been thoroughly tested in order to avoid um, yeah, loops inside the flow. This is the uh, uh, in an overview, a simple Drupal view with an overview where all the events from our test environment are logged. When somebody creates a new action or wants to manage an existing action, you get a pop-up or a new page and then you can, all the fields that I mentioned earlier, you can combine them and save them and it will work. Um, another example is, for example, configure that the newly added accounts earn coins whenever their profile is completed. So that's a, that's a basic um, thing for onboarding to get new, um, can I say, souls to the website is it's the get to know with the system, join the community, complete your profile and get coins. You can use them in the shop. So a new, a new user joins the community, completes the, the profile info and gets rewarded and he can be sent to the shop if you have enough coins, uh, of course. A third example, and this is the, the, the more complex one, we can configure counts, uh, coins whenever a member uses a device that resides at the office of an external partner. So for example, I have to go on physiotherapy and in my therapy, I have to, they have to attach me to a machine for half an hour. That data is also stored in the machine. From some of the machines, that data was also sent to Microsoft Dynamics. We have an API key. You could add it there when you say external event triggered by the API. You can also add coins to that. 
And all that information also appears then in the feed of that user. So this is also something we can uh, configure. But we also have to keep in mind that while gamification has many advantages, it should be thoughtfully implemented to align with your website's goals and target audience. For us, for us, it's, um, I'm going to go a little bit faster. For us, it was very important to understand the business logic, that we do not over-engineer or under-engineer something. So we made it between brackets, so that there's some room to wiggle if needed. So we're not going to do um, over-engineering of the uh, gamification, but it can be faced in, in, in later phases. So just quickly on gamification, for the client was important, increased engagement, so member status, visibility, learning and skill development. We can facilitate learning, so it's important that um, members of the community learn how to create a blog and what are the rules that are attached to it. Motivational and goal achievement, we have to incentivize the buttons and the actions. This is something I didn't mention, but when you create an event, a button that is linked to that will get incentivized, like, hey, create a blog, break and, a blog post and earn 50 coins, for example. Um, the social interaction, most important for them, it's the community. We have to encourage users to invite them to join. It's, it's inviting, it's sharing, reviewing. The brand loyalty, but look what they are doing. Oh, this is great and do stuff there. And then differentiation, setting apart from competitors and trying to be more appealing than what's on the market. Um, but there is more, much more. Um, this is the overview of the current status of the project. I'm just going to quickly show what it's about. And I just highlighted the very, the, only the black spots in there. So there is a lot of things we can talk about, but that will be for another time. So if there are any questions, I have three minutes left, or, uh, yes, <laughs> there's something you need to know. Uh, Well, um, first of all, it's important to note that it's still a, um, a project under development. So we are still in testing phase now with the client, with the test audience internally. Um, but this, for me, it all boils down to what the client mostly want. He wanted a community that feeds the community. In a way, they were tired of creating content for their main site. And they were like, okay, wait, let the community create the content but we can moderate them and we can point certain members of the community with a, a higher member status so they can um, enrich or change um, content that uh, appears on, on, on the website. And we get people to come to the website because they earn something and they, have, they are incentivized to do more. And that was their first, of that is their first thing when we go live to, to create content. For example, the products in the shop you can write a review on a product, you can share it, you can uh, rate a product. And that's the important thing they want to do without having to invest that, mu that, that, oh, that much money themselves. Because um, as I told before, they invest a lot of money in social um, media presence and they want to autom automate it in the future. But that's something I would love to talk about the moment we have some data, but indeed it's, it's monitored, it's something we, uh, we're going to watch. Yes. They spend it in the shop. The shop for real products. For real products, yes. 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 Well, it's um, the, the gamification is applied on an action, and the action is universal. But then you have communities, like you said, like um, writing a blog or or creating a, 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 a paper or something. That that's all that's all possible. But then individually, you have your own um, how can I call it wallet 
with your coins and these are yours and then you can go to the shop that is attached to your profile your profile knows geolocation wise you, you entered your profile information for example you're from belgium you speak dutch you have the be slash nl shop you go there and there you can spend the coins it's not like this that you, you they can also add a limit to a certain amount so there are no negative values in the shop so there is a lot of thinking but you spend it in your uh, assigned shop. So there's no, I can only spend coins. Yes. No, 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 it's the coins. Okay, okay. Yeah. Furthermore, they can, we build in something in the settings of the whole system that they can say a coin is a value or a coin is a percentage. So they can play with it. But we told them, you can play with it, but it's very dangerous. You need to test it. You need to test all test cases so that you're not checking out in a shop that the shop owes you money, for example. So, <laughs> yeah, but it's true. It's a, it's a case. So, uh, yeah. But, but who is paying for the product in the shop? But they, 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 pay, they pay for the products, but the coins give a discount. No, no the owner of the shop gives a discount of the whole... No, 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 it's a discount. It's a discount value. Yeah, you can add a certain, they can, when they create in uh, Microsoft Dynamics a product and it's, it's synchronized with Drupal Commerce, in Commerce you can say, okay, for this product, you can add a maximum of that many coins, depending on the value of the coins. So it's a discount system uh, and not, uh, uh, not for free. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you.